So back to lane 31 now for Mike, where he's perfect, three for three. In marks. You notice how, since I mentioned spread eagles and half worcesters, that we've seen a lot of punch outs? And I didn't want to mention it because if I did, maybe they'd <laughs> hang around a little longer, but you've, you've done it anyway, so. What will I tell the Morgan boys that you guys are bowling all right, it's Doug. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. This is Mike now. No, it's a nine. <laughs> 98 through eight. Both bowlers on the head pin fairly consistently, but two full going right through the middle. And again, Tommy's there, but six, seven, and 10. A couple pieces of wood in front of the six, seven, plays it to the left, maybe snap it across. Well, he did, but he mm. left the 10. Great try there. Thought he had done it, I'm sure. Take a 10 box. Well, an opportunity lost there with the open frame, but he's got another chance here in the eighth. Pretty good looking first ball, but this is anything but an easy shot. The two, five, and eight. Joe Paglia will have to head down and check that piece of wood. And it is in play, although probably not a factor. Well, you almost got to be flush on the two pin to carry the eight, but you run the risk of missing the five. Whoa, he just <laughs> off the piece of wood. I don't know if Tom intended to do that, but it worked out for not him. Not a bad idea, though. <laughs> just gave, well, the ball took the five, and the five took the eight, and the wood came off the wall for the last pin, the two pin. Mike Morgan now in the pocket, but you know, funny leave. The five, eight, nine, ten. There goes the five. <laughs> now, now it's, the it's eight, e nine, ten. Now it's even less fun. <laughs> and a seven box. Nope. Room for one more box for Mike Morgan in this first game. This time, the 5-8. And I don't like the little piece of wood in between. Hit the 5-pin clean, the wood misses the 8-pin. Come up on the nose, you're liable to miss both. Ooh. Just enough to catch it. Good shot. Well, four marks for Mike, and they're all on lane 31. So he'll fill a spare here in the 10th. He'll stay on lane 31. Nice looking ball. <laughs> Fortunately, he doesn't have to shoot at this. <laughs> the 510, it's an eight fill and a 123. So a chance for Tom Morgan to uh, close the gap here if he were to add another mark or two. He's working on a mark right now. And he fills oh. it. He fills it. Lead down to five now. That was a quick strike. Good chance to take the lead now in the match. Although he'll need another mark. How about a double? Oh, yes, oh. big break there. Huge break on the 5 8. Not the coin of phrase, but a little bit of Morgan magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> looked like it was almost an impossible spare leave, then cleared out everything but the 10, and he'll convert yes. that. 120 plus a ball. If he takes more than three, he'll have the lead. And the fill is seven. Look at that, almost the identical lead <laughs> that we had earlier. So Tom Morgan comes from behind with a big finish and takes a four pin lead after one game. Still plenty to go here on Stars and Strikes. Don't go away.
Here's Tom Morgan ready to lead it off in game two, and he's got a four-pin lead. And he'll shoot at the three, six, and ten. And he's got it spare. Been a different bowl of the last four or five boxes now. Seems to be throwing the ball a little more authority. Not much to choose between the two brothers in that first game. They each had three spares and a strike. Only a four pin differential in the scores. Tom Morgan with a chance for two in a row here. But a difficult one. Almost have to cap the wooden front. Oh, it's gonna have to come off the wall. Ooh. It does. <laughs> Mike doing a little house cleaning over on lane 31. Mike averaged 152 in his three strings last week. Overall here on Stars of Strikes, Mike Morgan is averaging just under 140. <laughs> So you're saying that that 123 is kind of a lousy game for him, huh? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Spare in the first for Michael. Keeping a list of all these things. <laughs> well, so far we're perfect in this mat, uh, this game. All marks, three frames completed, and all spares for both bowlers. Yeah, we may have another one here in a second. Nine drop. Mike's ball, if any, it's straight, but if anything, it'll back up from left to right. Two marks each to start this second game. Tommy's ball is kind of on the straight side, but if anything, it'll break right from right to left. Just opposite of his brother, Mike. Tom on a spare. Ooh, oh, punches wow. out the one and five. And you don't see that very often. Not until we mention spread eagles and half Worcesters. Well, it's funny, too. We've talked about this before. The half Worcester is so common, yet the one five punch out, which is in essence the same shot, doesn't happen very yep. often. Well, well that, that can slow you down. That certainly can. Take the wind right out of the sails. Spare two five. It's just like 17 pins total in the two frames. Well, he seemed to be in a pretty good groove before that, so the key is, I guess, to try and forget it, although this is not going to be an easy shot. The two, eight, and nine with no real playable wood. So Tom, in spite of starting the game with two marks, is going to be at 44 through four. Well. Like we've said so many times before, the object of the game to hit the head pin or the object pin. Sometimes you get burned. That's true. Two on the spare, but you hit your object pin, but a quarter of an inch either way. Might have been a strike or a nine pin drop. Like that. That was on a spare for Mike Morgan. So Mike retakes the lead. And he will now wait for the wood. Seven pin. Yeah, looks like that wood will stay right there. Clear shot at the seven. Yes. Three, Three in a row, yep. You got it. Three spares. Retakes the lead. Big Phil again. He knew it too. He was waiting for that eight nine or strike. That's three straight nine drops on marks. Very well could have been strikes. Seven pin this time. We take a break. Mike Morgan probably wants to keep going during the commercial. We'll try and stop him. <laughs> and we'll be right back in a minute.
Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Tom Morgan now trailing in this match as brother Mike has put together some quick offense here. Oh, but how about that for offense? That was a quick one. Nice lift on the ball. Ball breaks back into the 1-3 pocket. Scrambles nine of them, and then finally the 10-pin. Last one to go down. Looking for the double. Second strike of the match for Tom. Off target this time, but look out. Oh, that piece of wood on the left prevented the strike. Stopped that other piece of wood from coming It was forward. coming back, yes. Yep. But I'm sure Tom will be pleased with the spare. If he can convert, he does. Back and forth we go. <laughs> this is one of those matches where it would be fun to have the bowlers mic'd. <laughs> yes. So that we could hear exactly what's going on. But They both seem to be rooting for each other, though. But there's a little bit of ham in each one of them, so I imagine it would be pretty entertaining. <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> oh, could be a strike. Could be a strike. The six pin is wobbling. Instead, it's the fourth consecutive nine drop for Mike Morgan. He's got a testy spare here. He's going to have to come up high in the wood. I don't think he can drive the ball straight through. No, it's, oh, oh, my. That's what he had to do, though. Just missing the cap of that piece of wood. Now you know it's going to go if he hits it. Yep, <laughs> just missed it. 86 half for Mike Morgan. So he will slide now over to lane 31. Leads in the match by 20, rather by 18. Trail by four coming in. Right on the head pin, how about that? Are you kidding? Five nine drops in a row and then a strike. And all of those nine pin drops were solid nine pin drops. He, with any luck, he could have had four, five, six strikes in a row. Incredible. This is on a spare for Tom Morgan, and he'll have to shoot at the diamond. Not wasting any time. It's safe to say that for most bowlers, if you're in a groove, you bowl faster. I, I think that's the tendency. In fact, you have to almost put reins on yourself, try to keep you from charging the line too fast. But most of them, if they're in, they know they're in a groove. Just like a baseball pitcher, the batter wants to step out on him to slow him down <laughs> a little bit because he's hitting the corners. A little off target that time, but not too bad. Right, the one, two, and eight pins. Ooh, missed the head pin. Watch out, watch out. Hold on. <laughs> Didn't hit it quite solidly enough. Tom turned away anyway. He knew he had missed it. 99 through eight. And Mike Morgan working on that big strike in the sixth. This is what he did last week. He threw that monster of 173 in that second game. Be a bit surprised to see him throw a double the way he's been throwing that first ball. This time he crossed over a little tight on the one two pocket, leaves himself to three, five, six, and ten for the spare. Hmm. One fourteen through seven. And his lead is twenty one, as you see in the lower right. Just slightly off target, missing the head, the one and the seven. <laughs> For the spare? Yes, right on top of it. Almost lost the head pin going up over the seven pin. Watch how high the seven pin. Oh. <laughs> 
Tommy Morgan, final two, game number two. Tom really needs a couple of marks here in really, this final two. He really does. Doesn't want that lead to grow too high. Six and nine pins for the spare. Yes. Spare up in the ninth. Tom had a strong finish in the first game. Like another one here. Fifth mark this second game. Four spares and one strike. I'd like a second strike if you can. A light hit. This time you'll have the three, a two and the ten. Try to cut the two on the left hand side. Going right after oh. it. Oh. oh boy, was that close. Tom almost ran into the wall. <laughs> Trying to get that one to go over. Takes the single pin for the nine and a 126. Two string total, 253. He'll be trailing after the second game. The question is by how much? McMorgan is working on a mark. Of course, has two frames to go. It appears that he will be up over 150 at least in this game. Ooh. But he'll need another mark to do it now. Just trying to clear three or four more away. Get an eight, so it's 134. Hang on, the four pin will stay. Oh, look, a nine pin drop. <laughs> Haven't seen some of those, any of those in a while. About three boxes. Spare in the tenth. Just joined us. You can see the beginning of this game. All the nine pin drops that Mike Morgan had. 144 and a ball to come. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, Mike looked up, the pins, some of the pins fell over before he had a chance to throw. <laughs> so he'll re-rack. One forty-four plus a ball. And let's see. It'll be six. 150 even. So a 273 total for Mike Morgan and a 20 pin lead for younger brother against older brother. And we'll be back with game three in a minute. One game remaining and here's the man in the lead. The lead is 20. Mike Morgan looking for his second win in a row. And he leaves the eight pin, another nine pin drop. <laughs> Spare it up. Three years ago, Mike was here in the very first Tournament of Champions, and he put three wins together, coming up from the number five spot, before he finally lost to Bob Moran in what was one of the all-time great matches here on Stars and Strikes, 448 to 435. Could be another nine-pin drop. Let's see. Nope, only eight this time. Thought he might take an extra pin. Actually, after that, oh, nice cut shot there with the help of the wood. Get another look. Just sliding it to the left of that two pin and sliding everything to the right. Two marks in a row. And on his way to another 400 triple. So, hang on. 
Now, the only problem now may be that wood in front. It's very far out in front of the four and the seven. Let's see. Oh, yeah, no problem there. That's mark number 10 for Tom. Mike has 13. Ooh, tough break there. Would stop the wood from coming from the right, would have probably knocked down the four and the seven. Stopped it, now he's looking at the four, seven, and the 10 pin. Will it jump? No. So the lead will increase for Mike Morgan as he steps up to fill this mark. It's at 21 plus this first ball. See what he did last week. 21 out of 30 boxes were marks. Oh, through the middle for three. It'll be an eight box. Mike Morgan has failed to mark on lane 31 only one time in this match. That's where he is right now. He's 10 for 11, 10 marks in 11 tries over on this lane. But of course I had to mention it. <laughs> Does get a 10 box though. Nicely done. 49 through four. And an opening for Tom. Two open boxes by Mike. Two marks here and the match would be uh, fairly close. Ooh, oh. Just missed the head pin and four horsemen plus the triangle on the right hand corner. Quick word, if we may, about our participating sponsors for the Tournament of Champions. The folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, come to Salem and save. And Somerville Lumber, get it right the first time. One, two, four, ten left for Tom. Inside route and it won't get over to the 10 pin. And can't take advantage of the two open frames by his brother Mike. So we will pause with six frames to go in this match. Mike Morgan leads by 24. There's still time for older brother. We'll see in a minute. The stretch run here on Stars and Strikes. Mike Morgan leading brother Tom by 24 pins with six frames to go. Oh, big strike. Watch this one closely. Don't blink because they go in a hurry. Wow. He's got 14 marks now, Dan but only three on lane 32. That's where he just threw that strike. This has been his good lane right here, and he's got an eight drop. Oh, misfired on that one. Actually, four marks for Mike on lane 32 and nine on or rather 10 on lane 31. But he's open this time as he goes strike 9-10. 
putting at least a little bit more pressure on his brother because Tom knows he's got to put one mark up there just to keep the lead around 20. And uh -huh. it'll be a nine drop. That close to a strike. Looked like he might have got some sidewall action for the two pin, but certainly has a nice guide if that's frozen. I think it is frozen against the backside of the two pin. Doesn't need it anyways. Right on the two pin. The winner of this match gets Dave Richards next week in the semifinals. A reminder to stay tuned right after this match. We'll have week three of our doubles tournament of champions. Four horsemen right, one, three, six, ten. This is the one Mike would really like. He's cut into the lead. No, he's going to miss the head pin. I say Tom. There, I finally made the mistake. I get it out of the way. You wondered how long it would be. And yeah, I'm right into the third game, though. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine box, so the lead is now 28 with four boxes to go. And Mike is sitting in a good spot here because he's got the lead and he bowls first. Four boxes remaining. You need four marks to make up 28 pins. So Mike can really put him into a double strike situation with a couple marks. Through the middle, spread eagle. Or with a bad frame or two, we could <laughs> reduce it to needing only three marks. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. He, he it. got it. The spread eagle for a spare for Mike Morgan. Looked at first, he's going to be awful close to making it. Went, actually went through the three and the six and came back off the wall. Great shot. Fantastic. On the spare. Eight more. This could be the game winner right here. Six and the nine. Piece of wood in the front wants to get by the front piece. If he does, he should. Woo. <laughs> Came up high. He's got up on his toes on that one because he thought he might clip the front piece wood. He was able to get by it for the spare two in a row and a lot of pressure now on older brother Tom. And what's new? Mike Morgan is on the way to another 400 triple. It's 379 right now, plus the bonus ball in the eighth. Eight drop. The piece of wood sitting right there in front, not in a good spot. We'll have to wait and see if it's playable or not. Joe Pagley already on the way to look at it. Tom knows he's hoping. And let's see. It looks like it may be out of play. It is. So Tom will get a clear shot at the 2 5. No, pick the two right off it. Well, that could just about do it. The fill ball here for Mike Morgan is going to move the lead over 40. And Mike is taking no prisoners last week or this week. This fill will determine whether he needs another mark for 400. He's going to need another one. No, he's not going to need another one. He's going to get one anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that close to it. Needs a 127 for 400, so he's at 120 right now. There's 121, and still a box to come. 394. It's a six box or better. I wouldn't bet against him. Uh, no. There you go. That's 10 times now, 10 out of 13 appearances that 
Mike Morgan has rolled a 400 or better here. I wonder if he realizes that. Oh, picks off the object pin in the triangle. Now, he's already closed Tom out. There's no way Tom can do it, even if he were to fire all strikes here. Well, and then there were three. Tom Morgan, will move, I mean, Mike Morgan will move on next week. Dave Richards waiting. And two weeks from now, Paul Berger, the number one seed, will be in. Oh, Tom lets it slip off the lane. Tom had his moments uh, on this show, Dan. He was able to string some together at the end of the first game, and he had a pretty good start to the second game, but he just never really got it going after that. And there is a perfect example, chopping out the one and nine, which looks impossible. Four oh two for Mike Morgan. And Brother Tom will finish with a 359. So Mike takes the matchup of the two Morgan brothers from the North Shore. Mike making it two wins in a row. We'll talk to both bowlers, do the bonus ball contest, and set you up for the rest of the Tournament of Champions in a minute. And welcome back to Candlepin Stars and Strikes, the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Tom Morgan just arriving on the scene here, or a turn in here so we can get you on camera. And uh, well, I know this was uh, this was a lot of fun for both of you. The uh, the fourth place prize, uh, probably, well, I guess neither one of you really was doing this for money, right? It was just the fact that you were bowling against your brother, and it was a lot of fun, yeah, right? Awful fun, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no money involved. Uh, Mike is throwing the ball real good. He's, yeah. he's on top of his game right now. He's throwing the ball better than I was, and that's the name of the game. He's throwing the ball better than I was, and I just couldn't get anything going. So now you have to uh, stay around for the next couple of weeks and maybe root for him, right? Oh, yeah, I have a lot of money invested in this. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that now, but yeah. The better he does, the better I do. <laughs> Thanks very much, Tom. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks we hope to see you lot. again soon. Okay. That's Tom Morgan. Before we get to the bonus ball contest now, let's show you the address. We didn't get a chance earlier, but we've got a few seconds right now. We want to make sure we have your postcards here. Uh, if not for this season, certainly for next season. So uh, you can mail them in now. And if, uh, if we don't get them in time for uh, this year, we can certainly hold them over for next year. Regular size postcards only, please. Your name, your full address, the number from 1 to 10. Mail them on into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. And if we draw your card and the ma number on your card matches the bonus ball, then you win the jackpot. And Mike Morgan right now is going to try and demonstrate how this works. We have, uh, we have two... Brand new sets of bowling balls on the line, too, from Paramount Industries. Should we get a match? Oh, my. Well, he was hitting lane 31 all day, and he throws the strike. Not a match for Jeanette McDonald of Lowell, Mass., whose guess was seven. But, uh, Jeanette, how could, you, how could you have known that Mike was hitting lane 31 so well today? And uh, so that means we'll be up to $150 next week. And for Mike Morgan, win number two in a row. And, uh, oh, you, you put this one away. You, you took the lead to the second game and, and cruised home from there. I say put it away. 20, <laughs> 20 pins isn't a safe lead. But I came out with two marks the third, the third yeah. string. And yeah. he got the mark and punched three. I mean, you know, it makes it a little easier up, up over two marks. And Tommy, when he was moving to the 31, he was having trouble hitting the head pin over there. So. He wasn't like attacking on 31 mm -hmm. like he was 32, so I had a little extra advantage there. But as far as you're concerned, you like it here, don't you? I mean, oh, you you bowl very well here. This, this place treats me well. <laughs> Maybe it's the two hosts. I don't ah, know. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Well, next week uh, it'll be semifinal time. Dave Richards uh, caught the end of the show, I know, and he's ready to go. Oh, I'm sure he is. It's just throw the ball and hope you, you know, if the breaks keep coming, <laughs> anything can happen, I'll tell you. He's tough. They don't get easy. There's no easy matches. Congratulations, Mike. Thanks again. All right. Another 400 triple. Ho hum. Another 400 triple for Mike Morgan. Let's spin over to the uh, ladder. We'll get a look at uh, what's happening next week. Semi-final week, of course, next Sunday at 12 noon. Mike Morgan looking for three in a row against Dave Richards. Yeah, Dave Richards was here seeing the end of this one, so he knows what he's up against. And, of course, uh, Mike's been here before, so he knows. Of course, don't go away because we're only halfway done today here on Stars and Strikes. After a brief break, we will be right back with Stars and Strikes doubles and week three of the doubles. Tournament of Champions, all brought to you by Tri-State Megabucks. We thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget to join us next Sunday at 12 noon. We'll have two full hours of semifinal week here on Stars and Strikes. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, bye-bye from Park Place Lanes. Hi.
Hi, this is Kimberly Carson. Here's what you'll find on the Movie Watch Sunday double feature. First up today at 2, if you've never seen High Noon, now's your chance. Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly star in this popular and acclaimed Western. Then at 4, Betty Davis and Lillian Gish are sisters living with age and memories on the rocky Maine coast. Let two great screen actresses show you how it's done. Also starring Vincent Price, The Whales of August is at 4. Join me at 2 for the Movie Watch Sunday.